Welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. And I am Chris Clements. And happy anniversary of D-Day today. Happy anniversary of D-Day and also the anniversary of the passing of our favorite president. Yes. 20 years. I think yesterday, right? Yeah, that's right. Of Ronald Reagan. Has it been 20 years? 20 years that Ronald Reagan left this earth. And and the earth has never has has not been the same since. No. If 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 we needed a leader right now in in the world and in our own country, uh we need Ronald Reagan. Yeah. And uh Donald Trump is not that man, and certainly Joe Biden is not that man. Well, and it's uh and it is interesting today. Yes. Uh so forty years ago today is when uh, president Ronald Reagan did the 40th anniversary. And he was the first president to go to Normandy. To Normandy. I did uh, not know that. I was listening to a podcast this morning with, uh, I think it was Morning Wire with Michael Reagan. And I did not know that he was the first one. Yeah. And now every every president since has gone. Right. Which is fantastic. It is. And it's, it's important because it is one of the most important things that, that has happened in our history was the United States finally entering World War II to save the world. Kicking and screaming as it, as yeah. it was. Kicking and, and screaming. Um, and Reagan, you know, the Point to Hawk speech 40 years ago is one of his best. Um, you know, Alyssa and I and the kids had a chance to be there oh, last that's year. Right. That's right. And uh, it was amazing. It was just a absolute, and, you know, we, we did a podcast after that to talk about it. But today's the 80th anniversary. Yes. And there are very few of those men who were there that are Yeah, left. this is going to be the last big anniversary where those were survivors they do of the that big day. Because they do the big ones every five years. Yeah. Right? Where, I mean, really, there'll be very few yeah. left. If, if it any. could be that the, this is the last of the big celebration. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. So it's a solemn day. Yeah. And an important day. And it's amazing, you know, probably how many people really don't know the significance of this day. No question. You know, especially within our school systems, our failing government school systems, and even in some private schools. I mean, it's just kids don't don't get what this day meant for the survival of the human race. Yeah. Literally, the survival of the human race. I Absolutely. mean, it, it is it, it and it's it really is you know, it's not the kind of thing that that people spend much time thinking about or talking about in this day and age. And it's 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 too bad because history is important and it's messy. Oh yeah. And it's ugly and yep. it's not always great. It's, it's always nice to look back in our twenty twenty four lenses yeah. and think, Oh, well, we are so much more civilized now. Yeah. No, not really. And it's interesting that as we I look mean, at they're, the they're, bloodshed in Ukraine and right in the the hit and there is a, a a little bit of a history repeats itself, uh, you know, going on. I mean, we there are elements in the United States who are taking that isolationist tack that was very prevalent with Taft, for yeah, example, absolutely um, in uh, the United States, which was. You know, I, you know, if you read anything about Winston Churchill and his effort to get the United States to engage in World War II, um, you know, he had a direct line to FDR, Franklin Delaware Roosevelt, our president at the time. And Roosevelt was just clear. He's like, look, I got to get through the next election before we can do this. Yeah. And, you know, it is it is fascinating to think about the politics of that era impacting the United States engagement in a world conflict and realize, wow, nothing's changed. <laughs> Nothing has changed. We are still dealing with the politics. And I, I get it. I understand it's important people. Because human nature is human nature. Yeah. And, and people do question, well, why should we be involved? Why do we have to do this? And, you know, if you look back, you, you look back and say, well, of course we needed to get involved to stop Hitler. And 
of course we need to get involved to stop Japan. Uh, but a lot of those same people who would say that say, well, is Putin really a bad guy? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like, okay. Yeah, now we can have different... Hamas, Hamas really wants peace. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Hamas, when they say from the river to the sea... They're, they really are. They're really just talking about going on a vacation. Uh, they, uh, no, eliminating <laughs> just the state of Israel. Right. They don't mean about the slaughter of of Jews. No, that would be a bridge too far. And by the way, we we haven't seen that before, have we? Oh my gosh! In the same vein, yeah. So, so and, it, and, and 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 that's the significance of this day too. If we had not been successful on D Day, the reality, the truth of what the Nazis were doing with the six million Jews slaughtered might, might not, it would have seen the light of day someday. Maybe, but, but and it would have, but it, it would have continued. continued. Yeah. There we go. In, in, I mean, it, in, in stereo. And yeah, I don't know if and, anyone and we is, have a, you know, a, a, a fascist Nazi uh, terrorist group wanting to do the same. thing. Yeah. And, and I don't know those of our listeners who've seen man in the high castle, you know, this is a, a show that, that, uh, imagines oh, yes. us losing yes. World War II. Yeah, I have not seen the whole thing, and, but I've seen different episodes. It's um, very good. You know, so half the country is German occupied, half the country is J Japanese occupied, and then there's a little section of the neutral zone in the middle of the country <laughs> yes. in the Rockies. Um, but yeah, that that actually could have happened. Yeah, had we not. I mean, it, it you have to give so much credit to the resilience of not only the commanders who came up with the plan for overlord uh and and the ability to map this out but really obviously to the young men who carried it out because young men and women i mean it it was no it was just young so men many things that could, carrying it out on on d-day well there were Women involved. I, yes, in there them. were women involved in the war effort, but it was much different than what we have today. Yeah, and um, you know, I'm really thankful on a day like today that my dad saw it fit to make me watch all these old war movies mm -hmm. when they came out. Like he made me watch Patton. He there was a there was a great movie that I that used to be on like ABC all the time, The Big Red One. Mm -hmm. With Mark Hamill yep. and Lee Marvin, and there's and there's a whole section of that movie is about D Day, and it's just fascinating. And and I we, we would watch that together all the time. And I'm so thankful for that because it just gave me a taste of what that generation did for our country yeah. and what it, what that generation did for the world. Right. And I've always had a reverence from it for it ever since. And I heard some interesting statistics <laughs> this morning about that generation that. Well, that kind of plays into what what is lacking today. To your point, of of the isolationist attack today and and some other societal ills. Did you know that ninety four percent of Americans back then went to church? Wow! And the vast God, majority in the ninety percentile of families were two parent families. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, if you wanted to find the greatest generation, that's that's what it was all about. I mean, and now like forty five percent. Um, of our of our society as single mothers struggling dads are absent it's it's a it's a horrible thing yeah i mean it's so much has changed in the culture um and and that does impact it abs how how we live our life and well how we, we view we've the world. become much more of a self-centered you know egoist culture yeah, right i mean it and that is I, they're obviously even at the time with the folks who were opposed to entering World War II, there are clearly people who weren't. But once we did, there was a fair amount of unity. Yeah, well, I mean, sure the bombing that, of a major naval base in Hawaii would do yeah, that too. Yeah. I mean, obviously there was a lot of fear after that. And we made some mistakes along the way, like interning, you know, tens of thousands of Japanese here in, the, yeah, in America. No question. You know, just here in Arizona. Like I said, you know, the history is messy. It's and, messy. And their mistakes were made. But but when you look at what the individual sacrifices were, it's pretty remarkable. Um, you know, always worth going back and watching 
like you said, the, the movies that, that depict this, um, to remember the, the heroism and the bravery and the sacrifice, you know, whether it be saving private Ryan or oh, band of brothers, which was, you know, band of brothers is amazing because it's, it's all true. Um, I mean, saving private Ryan, the, the, you know, I think they did a, a amazing job with the scene of the storm of D day. Uh, and, and then even, you know, move, older movies that, that aren't as well known, a, a Bridge Too Far was one that I saw when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, which was astounding. Yeah. Band of Brothers is amazing. I mean, everyone that, should watch that. That really is. That should be required. You was really, for the first time, um, I think it was last week, my son, Preston, expressed an interest in learning more about World War II. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, he's learned a good amount about it in school, which I'm, I'm grateful for. But he, he said, can we watch Private Ryan together? Can we watch some of these movies together? I said, absolutely. But just be prepared. It's, it's not pretty. Yeah. yeah. It'll have an impact on it. Well, I, what I think I might have him do is watch the big red one. with Because it's not really that bloody. But it, but it takes you from you know, the beginning of the war to, I mean, following the 1st Infantry Division. You know, all the way to the war in Africa. And then discovering you know, the ovens of, of yeah. Auschwitz and... and Back out, yeah, and the Holocaust it takes you. To, and there's a great scene at the end of that movie, where I think it's Mark Hamill opens up one of the ovens, and one of and a German soldier is there with a gun, and he fires the gun and doesn't. There's nothing in it, and he just keeps reloading. There's nothing in it, and then Mark Hamill just takes aim and and kills him, and keeps firing his gun. Because he's just so angry at yeah. everything he's seen, and then Lee Marvin comes up, gives him another clip, <laughs> says, "Here you go, <laughs> keep going." And it just it just encapsulated for me as a young kid. Like I mean, war is it emotionally, physically, spiritually. It just it takes so much from you. Yeah, war is hell. And I mean, and that no was watching it. him do that, and I, I kind of understood that as a, as a young kid. Yeah. Um. But. Uh, yeah, it's a solemn day, solemn moment. It makes me uh, remember the days of Reagan and the, the amazing speech that he gave on on this day, being the first um, president to do so in Normandy. I'm so grateful and um, blessed that every president since have gone. Yeah, it's well, not it's, a partisan thing. It's it's an American. Thing. Yeah, and it's it's if if you've never read or or seen uh, Reagan's speech. At, at D-Day on, or at Normandy on uh, the 40th anniversary oh, it's, of D-Day. It's... Go to YouTube uh, and watch it. It's it's just amazing. It's yeah, these are the boys of Pointe the... de Hoke. Yeah. These are the men who took the cliffs. These are the champions who helped free a continent. These are the heroes who helped end a war. That's just chills. Just, you know. The, the, the entire speech, and you can go on to like Voices of Democracy and, and read speeches from all over yeah. different eras, and, and uh, it's fantastic. But what was, was great about him doing it then was that there was still, you know, 40 years after, there were still a lot of survivors that were able to, to be thanked by our president, yeah. be thanked by the American people, and they're still thanked by the French. Oh, yeah. Every year. Yeah. It's kind of a, the running joke in America, though, too. You know, if it wasn't for America, <laughs> there wouldn't be France. Well, yeah, it's true. And the, and you know what? The French know that. Yeah. Uh, particularly the French that live in Normandy. Yeah. I mean, they 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 remember. Uh, it is, is fascinating to me how much they appreciate it even now. And, and you know, most of the French people who were there— are no longer here. Yeah. So it's their descendants who are expre- continuing well, to express that gratitude. They, 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 care, they, they care for those plots, right? Yeah. And they live amongst those plots they right. li- and, and those crosses. They're reminded of the sacrifice every day when they see what surrounds them. Yeah. I wonder how many of this generation know that there's an American cemetery in, in France. I heard that question today, and I was like, Ugh. "I'm going to make sure my kids know." Yeah, yeah, the sacrifice of that generation. 
Absolutely. And I'm really grateful. I had a dad who was obsessed with, I mean, to the extent that I'm obsessed with Ronald Reagan and read almost every book, and he was obsessed with Winston Churchill. So he imparted that upon me in terms of learning about the World War II. Yeah. And, and making sure I understood why we were there, how it happened, and even some of the messy stuff of how we got in. Right. You know, the politics of it. You know, some people even are like, well, you know, is it true that FDR knew that uh, the Japanese were going to attack Pearl Harbor? Why was the entire fleet there and everything? Good questions. Yeah. <laughs> not, not exactly bad questions. Right. But uh, I think he was, at the same time, was desperate to get us in to, um, because only America could turn the tide. Yeah. And, and Winston Churchill was definitely de- desperate to get us in. Yeah. He knew it. Oh, he knew, he knew it. I mean, after, after, you know, the Battle of Britain and everything else, you know, it, Britain was holding on by a threat. Yeah. The entire continent was holding on by a threat. It was only America that turned the tide. Right. So, God bless America. Yeah. And, and I, I just pulled up a, a quote of Patton because I, I think it's just one of the greatest quotes ever. And it just talks about the, the brutality of war. Mm-hmm. You know, no bastard ever won a war by dying for his country. He won it by making the other poor dumb bastard die for his country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, Very but true. a lot of our people did die. And continue to, to yeah. sacrifice yeah. today. Exactly. Which is why you have such outrage when there's not a recognition of sacrifice. Yeah. You know, it, 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 in, in today's terms, and this I'm just riffing at this point, you know, um, Joe Biden had 56% approval rating at the beginning of his term. People were rooting for Joe Biden. They wanted to move on from the Trump era. And then something happened. 13 of our best and brightest were senselessly slaughtered in Afghanistan. And the withdrawal of Afghanistan brought a shame and despair to our military and to our country. And he's never recovered. Yeah. I mean, because never. this stuff matters. And, and to your point about Ukraine, there's no clear path <laughs> to victory or plan for Ukraine. That's the frustration you, know, you see on the right. Um, Israel, dumpster fire. We can be both pro Israel and pro Hamas. No, you can't. Yeah, it's one or the other. And and Israel just needs to make Gaza do whatever they need to do to finish it. And that's that is the horrors of war. That is the horrors of war. Well, on this 80th anniversary of D-Day, we remember the sacrifices made by those great heroes, and uh, hopefully, you can think about that as well. Yeah. And God bless this country. God bless Ronald Reagan, yeah. the GOAT. <laughs> right. And uh, God bless you all for all, all you, right. you do every day. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. Take care.